Just as in building a house, we need to have a good foundation in order to withstand the rain and wind over time. Yes, this is basic. Yet, even the most advanced company with a track record of years of improvement should never ignore this point. In fact, these advanced companies understand the importance of having a solid foundation better than others. Addressing this point, there are three sessions in this tape. In session one, we will look for wastes in our factory and think of ways to eliminate them. In session two, we will go back to the basics and study the importance of housekeeping and workplace organization. In session three, we will see what we can do to meet the diversifying needs of customers in a short lead time. Unfortunately, there is too much waste in our work environment. While we talk incessantly about the difficulties of making money, we tend to ignore the waste that surrounds us and to overlook opportunities for improvement. While we may be busy in catching up with every day's urgent work, isn't it also very important to ask ourselves a fundamental question? Are we spending enough time finding out what's really happening on the shop floor? Elimination of waste starts where the action is taking place. As early as the 1920s, Henry Ford was concerned with the problem of waste and discussed it in his book Today and Tomorrow in the chapter titled Learning from Waste. To put it in simple terms, if it does not add value, it's waste. After studying Ford's book, people at Toyota learned what waste actually was and figured out what they could do about eliminating it. Many people say, of course we know we need to reduce waste. So what's new about that? But let's spend some time to see what's going on in our factories. At a major electronics manufacturer where printed circuit boards are assembled, let's take a look at some of the processes that add value to the product. Starting with receiving. Notice they transfer materials by either conveyor or by forklift. Receiving inspection follows in a room where component preparation work is done also. Later, parts are stored in a stock room, then picked up and sorted according to their distinctive characteristics. Then, parts are taken to a stock room again, followed by an auto insertion process where the parts are loaded onto the printed circuit boards. Next, hand loading of more electronic components takes place. The board goes through a wave soldering process. The reverse side of the board is clipped manually. And when final inspection is completed, we have a finished PC board assembly unit. Whether we make automobiles, TVs, cosmetics, or semiconductors, we need to ask how many of these activities are absolutely necessary for our production, or how many of these activities are adding value to the products rather than cost, or how many of these activities would the customer care about? As we study more, we'll find that there are many wastes in our factory. For example, when we get ahead of work, which is to produce more than required by the next process, there is waste. We call this waste from overproduction. When this happens, we have to pay money for unneeded work and unnecessary raw materials. Yet we accumulate more inventory which in turn generates more material handling and inventory carrying costs. Furthermore, we lose track of the priority of work and discipline may be lost. We even buy equipment because we do not know the true capacity of the machines. Since overproduction creates more problems and obscures the real cause of problems, this should be considered the worst waste in our factory. To avoid this, we should produce only the amount required by the next process at low cost, not too early or too late, just in time. While waste from overproduction is not easy to identify, waste of waiting time is easy to discern. When people wait for material to arrive or watch a machine running, this waste is easily observed. In fact, it is even recommended to convert other wastes into waste of waiting so that corrective actions can be taken immediately. 
Transportation waste and double or triple handling waste will be another kind of waste. Also, some processing may be quite unnecessary and eliminated by improving the process or product. Inventory wastes are also very common, not only in the warehouse, but also on the conveyor or part storage area or in the truck. Since inventory covers problems of all different kinds, such as machine breakdown, quality defects, bad communication, inadequate schedules, and more, we should consider inventory and overproduction as the root of all evil. Since moving one's hands or working extremely hard does not add value to the product, customers do not necessarily want to pay for this wasted motion. Therefore, waste of motion must also be eliminated. Remember that move is not the same as work. Producing defects is clearly a waste, too. Furthermore, inspection itself may also be considered a waste. When we inspect something after the fact, it's too late. No matter how many years we inspect carefully, we won't be able to improve the product quality. Therefore, we need to practice the concept of quality at the source. As we look very carefully in our factory, there are many more wastes we can find almost anywhere. Actually, we will find waste in the office as well. But instead of having a contest of blaming others, there's an important point we need to recognize. The power and purpose of waste elimination activities is to improve the company's competitive position and secure more jobs. Almost having gone through with filing bankruptcy in the 1940s, Toyota had learned that banks are not necessarily all that helpful in a crisis. What Toyota could do was to use their brains, not money, to figure out what they could do with what they already had. Instead of asking for financial or government help, gradually they addressed the core issue of their problems. That was for management and employees to work together to eliminate the waste that was abundant in their work environment. They found that the following seven types of waste were the most prominent. Waste from overproduction, which is one of the worst wastes since overproduction conceals other problems. Waste of waiting time, which includes lack of parts to work on and watching machines run. Transportation waste, such as long distance transportation and double handling. Processing waste, such as unnecessary production processes. Inventory waste, unnecessary inventory covers up problems and creates more. Waste of motion, work, don't move. And waste from production defects or make it right the first time. Toyota's waste elimination activities are also practiced at Toyota Auto Body of California. Our basic philosophy is the total elimination of waste, which we depict with a little photograph showing a hunter killing the waste bird. When I say eliminate, I mean eliminate the wasted operation that they were previously doing. The walking to receive parts as opposed to having them delivered. The elimination of picking up a part and putting it down and then having to re-pick it up to reposition it. We've eliminated this by their help, not by management. What I have seen so far sounds so simple, or should I say more or less like common sense. Is it usual to feel like this? Yes, improvement is typically like that. We say that 90% of the improvement is made by people using their common sense. In fact, it's very satisfying to come up with new ideas for doing things better but practicing it may be difficult. Yes, we need to have an environment where people can practice their common sense. Unfortunately, though, we tend to be busy doing urgent jobs and forget about making time for important jobs. If you spend time in doing important jobs, you should be able to reduce the urgent jobs. Things are going to be more organized, so you can do things which you are supposed to be doing anyway. I see. What we must be careful of is that if you are doing urgent jobs or firefighting jobs, sometimes we tend to think that we are accomplishing a great deal. But we may not have accomplished any fundamental improvement. Exactly. What about some of the basic principles for eliminating waste? Can you share some ideas on this? Well, perhaps the easiest way to remember the principle is simplify, combine, and eliminate. 
If our ability to identify or find waste is well developed, our commitment to improvement will come by addressing each specific waste identified. Of course, if we are not accustomed to improvement activities for eliminating waste, it may take some time to get used to them. Also, it may require changing our mindset to be able to do them continuously and effectively. While we want improvement activities to become a way of life, let us for now review a few ideas on how to eliminate waste. The basic idea of improvement is simple. We should ask ourselves why many times when we find waste and think of ways to do our work easier, faster, cheaper, better, and safer. A basic approach for doing this is to simplify, combine, and eliminate. First, we try to eliminate any unnecessary work. The small ideas that uh, facilitate the work makes things easier. As you can see, if, if it wasn't from this paper, the calculator will be almost flat to the desk. This way, he picks it up a little bit, and it is a lot more visible. Before, we had the gun and the table. Uh, we did one and a half parts per minute. It also was a very tiring operation for the uh, operator because of the weight of the gun, picking it up and putting it back on the table. Now, with the help with, of one of our employees, we install a balancer in the table. Uh, we are available now to produce two parts per minute. We can also simplify the work. One of the first things that we had to do here was develop a cell in a U-shaped pattern. So the worker has all of the tools right at his fingertips. Or the products are and the machines are bolted to the table so that you don't have to hunt for them. The uh, fixtures are set up so that they can be operated pneumatically so everything is as simple and direct as possible. Everything they need here is right at their fingertips. The cells can be brought in so that a worker does not have to get up out of his seat to get the parts. It works in a two-box Kanban system so that if one box becomes empty, you have another box in back of it that has the same parts in it. Combining the work may help us a lot, too. We have a fixture that Betty is working on now. This fixture is one of the best fixtures we've got for our products because it entails two different processes. This fixture not only is used as an assembly fixture with fingertip controls, but it is also used as a test fixture. So once it is through the assembly process, it gets tested right on the same machine. What that does is it takes out excess movement of the product. Instead of building up a unit, setting it aside, taking it over to a test station, and then testing it, it gets assembled here, it gets tested here, and then it's, when it comes off this machine, it's completely done. That saves an awful lot of time. Employee suggestion is a key to developing these ideas. We have a little box that we encourage our employees to suggest any ideas or improvements that we can implement in our shop. As you can see, I'll try to get this box out. These are some of the suggestions we got. So I guess the point is that everybody can do this, but managers must have a great influence on the degree to which such improvement activities are practiced, right? I think if a manager has no experience in improvement activities on the shop floor, it's difficult to give guidance to the people at the shop floor. Only after managers have gone through the process of improvement and realize the significance of it will he or she will start to grasp the true importance of these seemingly simple activities. It seems as though in this country we have paid little attention to these activities in the past. Yes, in fact I'd like to show you a comment I found in the book In Search of Excellence. It came from a GM worker laid off uh, after working 16 years in the Pontiac division. Here it is. It says, quote, I guess I got laid off because I make poor quality cars. But in 16 years, not once was I ever asked for a suggestion as to how to do my job better. 
not one. I believe the situation now will be different from the day this book was written, but I still think we can learn a lot from the statement. So you are saying that without the true support of people at the shop floor, there will be a limit to the improvement potential. Exactly. In fact, I like to add an eighth waste to the seven waste Toyota developed. That is, the waste of not utilizing people's talent. I have one more question. How can you keep on practicing this concept of waste elimination? That's a very good question and a difficult one to answer. To put it as simple as I can, one needs to understand the general idea, then practice these ideas, and experience the satisfaction of seeing tangible re improvements incorporated into daily operations. Next, share the progress, involve more people, and get accustomed to doing it on a daily basis. So this waste elimination is an ongoing process. Yes. As you practice, the more you develop your ability to tackle even difficult ones. For example, by applying this simple concept to eliminating waste in robotic movement, and by combining the work content, one automobile manufacturer freed up five robots out of 24 in one welding line. I see. We want to continually improve. When I first heard that phrase, continual improvement, I thought that only meant something having to do with quality. But the more we underst the m more understanding, uh, reflect on that a little bit more, we find out that uh, continual improvement means everything that we do, whether it's housekeeping, whether it's individual, you know, improving our knowledge levels, our skill levels, uh, plan operations. We've been working on the seven deadly waste up here. And every one of those seven deadly waste, and we added one of our own, not utilizing the talents of your people. And that's number eight. Every one of those eight items exists in this plant. And I can tell you we've made improvements in every one of those eight items. And we've got a long way to go.